How you doing, I'm Matt. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make three drawers three different ways. And then I'm gonna show you how to install them properly, put a false drawer front on there, and then put your handles on in the center every single time. So I'm building a new workbench and I need to install drawers in here in multiple places. I'm gonna show you three ways to make drawers. We're gonna do good, better, and best as far as these three type drawers go. I'm not doing dovetails, I'm not there yet, but maybe one day. So the first two style of drawers are gonna be cut the same way, but they're gonna be assembled different. I know that I want my drawer 15 and a half inches deep by 16 and 5 eighths wide. So what I will do is cut these pieces the exact length that I want. So the long depth, we're gonna cut those 15 and a half. The side pieces, you're gonna to need to take off an inch plus the width of two pieces of plywood. So the first thing we gotta do is cut our parts to size and I rip these down on my table saw and then use my miter saw to cut them to length. Once I had all my parts cut out, I cut a quarter inch dado in the bottom and then test fit that quarter inch plywood to make sure it fit and then I cut a bunch of them like this. So once that's done, I ripped down that quarter inch plywood on the table saw and then I cut it to length using the miter saw. So when you cut the plywood for the bottom of the drawer, make sure you take into account the dado depth on each side. Now it's time for the assembly. I put plenty of glue in that dado as well as on each end where the butt joint's going to connect. Well, then it's just like assembling in a puzzle. Don't worry about it. if you get a little glue squeeze out, we can clean that up later, but make sure you have ample glue because that's where the strength is coming in. You see that back piece is shorter than the rest. I cut it a half inch shorter so that it rests on top of the plywood. Make sure everything's flush, and then I just use some brad nails and tacked it in place, and that just holds it till the glue dries. Again, the strength is in the glue. Then for the back of the drawer, you see me tacking the bottom of the drawer into the bottom of the back piece. Wipe that glue up, and you're good to go. So I just rip those a half inch shorter and then tack those in place, and this just kind of gives you a more detailed view of how I did that. So this is a very simple drawer if you don't wanna to have to cut the dados. Just tack these butt joints together with glue, measure the bottom, and then cut a piece of plywood to fit that bottom exactly. This is quarter inch plywood. You could use half inch plywood if you wanted to make it a little more robust and glue and brad nails will hold it in place. This is a strong shop drawer. All we have to do is add a face, and mount it with drawer slides. All of these are gonna mount the same way, so I'll show you how to do that at the end, how to mount the drawer. Now, one thing I would advise is to have the long pieces on the sides and the short pieces on the front and back. That way, when you're pulling the drawer, you're pulling against the glue and the fasteners, and you're not pulling you know, with the fasteners so that it'll pull off easier. Now, let's go to the better method. And it was at this moment that I realized I missed it. If you don't have a table saw, you can easily use a circular saw and a straight edge to break down your plywood. So on this method, we're just gonna cut the pieces of size as needed. I'm gonna take my Masca M2 pocket old jig, set it to a half inch, and also set my drill bit to a half inch. Using three quarter inch material, you'd set it three quarter inch, two pocket holes on each side of the front and back pieces. Then I cut that quarter inch dado all the way down on all four pieces. Now take into account where your pocket holes are gonna be versus where this dado is gonna be, especially if you're using half inch material. Then you'll just drive two pocket holes on each side, put that glue in that dado groove, and then the plywood that you've cut for the base will slip right in there, and then you'll attach the other side and get everything in place. Now I like to cut dados on all four sides of this, that way it's more secure on the bottom. I just think it fits better and works better. Again, if you don't have a dado stack, you can cut those grooves with a standard table saw blade. You just have to make two passes and then check out where the pocket hole is versus the dado. Make sure you don't do that. These CMT blades are fantastic. This is one of my favorite blades I've ever had. It's a 40 tooth. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. The strongest and best looking drawer by far is the quarter, quarter, quarter method, or some call it half, half, half. All you're doing is you're taking the thickness of your material and taking the half of that measurement, 
And in my case, it's gonna be a half inch thick material. There's a bunch of videos on how to do this. This is how I do it. So I just use my digital caliper. I set the blade up that it's, a, it's gonna make a quarter inch deep cut, a quarter inch away from the fence. And I use my dado stack at a quarter inch thick. Once that's done, I make my first cuts on my side pieces. You're gonna cut that groove in there a quarter inch away from the end. It's a quarter inch thick cut. And then the second piece, I use a quarter inch block to cut a quarter inch rabbit on each end. Some people cut that as a vertical cut, but I didn't because these are thin strips. Then you're gonna cut a quarter inch dado across the bottom of every piece. Be sure when you do this that it's on the opposite side of the rabbit on your front and back pieces. Then you're just gonna assemble the puzzle. Put plenty of glue in these joints and then you'll start snapping everything together. Everything should fit perfectly. You can use clamps to hold this while it dries or you can just use brad nails to tack it in place like I did so I can move on to the next one. If you do it right, when you snap them together, they're perfectly square every time. I really enjoy the way these look. The only problem is setting this up takes a while. And so if you don't have all of your drawer parts cut out, then you're gonna have to reset it up and it just takes a long time. But look at that, that looks good. When installing drawers like this, you know you've got an inch gap on each side. I know that I want it to be a quarter inch from the top apron so that I can put my drawer face on there and have an eighth inch reveal. So that'll give it about an eighth inch over this and then an eighth inch gap. These are Craig drawer slide jigs. They make things much, much easier. You just put those up there and they clamp in place. This is a quarter inch dowel rod that I'm gonna use for the spacer. The great thing about these is they have that lip there that keeps everything square to the face. And that means your drawer will set in there level and flush. All you have to do is level this away. So make sure these are the same distance. Now we got our drawer slides. We know that the wide part goes in. Now I can just lay them inside. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to figure out how far inset you want your drawers, whether you want it to be flush out here or if you want it to be inset. In my case, I know that I'm gonna have a seventh, eighth inch drawer face because that's the size material I have. And I want it to be inset in the frame all the way down. So I'm gonna set those drawer slides back an inch and five sixteenths. When it's fully extended, I won't get full extension, but it'll be enough to access the drawer and I'll get the inset that I want. So to install the drawer, it's really easy. Just gonna set it back in place. I like to use a block or something straight and flat so that we can make sure that the end is lined up with the face. Once that's done, you're just gonna put one screw in on each side. All right, once you have two on each side, you can undo these. Just bring them out until you can flip those levers on each side and you'll pull the whole drawer out and you'll be able to put that last screw in right there. Now you can take these jigs off because the drawer slides are in place. Just line them back up in the tracks. They should catch right here and it's gonna feel really snug, okay? You can just give it a small push. It should go right in there. We got our first drawer. We're ready for more. Hey, that rhymed. So you've got your drawers built and now you wanna put drawer fronts on there because these are all false front drawers we've made. It's really easy to do this. I'm gonna be using ambrosia maple. You can use whatever type of wood you want. Let's do it. Let me show you how. So I've got my drawer front cut out. I like to cut an eighth inch shorter than what the actual dimension is. That gives it about a 16th inch reveal on each side. If you want a bigger gap there, then you can cut it shorter. I've went ahead and cut some eighth inch strips out of the, on the table saw, and I'll just use those to shim up underneath here so that the, we're sure that the drawer front doesn't hit the apron on the way back when it moves by. So you check your reveal on each side, make sure it looks good. If you can also use some 16th inch shims to put in there if you want it to be perfect. Now, once I have it where I want it, you know I'm a fan of CA glue. This is Starbond medium thick. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. Lean the drawer front out a little bit. We're gonna put a little CA glue each side, spray the activator and then we'll press it to that. Make sure you check everything. If everything still looks good. We'll give that 20 or 30 seconds to dry. Then we'll be able to remove the drawer and then put screws in. 
Uh, Starbond actually has a starter kit I'll link to if you're interested. All right, we gave it about 30 seconds. We're gonna remove the drawer and then we'll install the screws. If your drawer is deep enough and wide enough, you can actually just drill and attach the drawer face without having to take the drawer out. So if you're doing multiple drawers, it doesn't matter what size they are, you need to figure out how to put the pull in the exact same place every single time. So you need five pieces of painter's tape, a few inches long, put one on each corner. This is not my original idea. I got this off of somebody else's YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description below. And you'll put one about center. The holes on this pull are inset. You'll hold this drawer pull, line the edge of the inside of that hole to the edge of your drawer, and then you'll mark where the outside of this hole is on the other side of the pull. I'll use a blue marker so you can see where the mark's at. We're gonna do that on all four sides. So we got four marks on there. Now all you have to do is take a straight edge and you're going to line up the edge of the straight edge with the corner. So this, in this case, it's gonna be the top left corner is gonna be aligned with that mark that you made on the bottom right. You're gonna draw a line right there. So we're gonna go bottom left corner to that top right mark. Make a mark. That's where the left hole will be drilled. Now we're gonna mark the right bottom right, top left mark. Bottom left mark, top right corner. Those should be the two drill places. Both are four and five eighths. Both are 11 and an eighth in. Make sure you use a, a center punch to, so that your drill won't walk on you. Now because my I use three quarter inch material on this drawer as well as a seven eighth inch drawer face, so I actually wind up using a Forstner bit to hollow out the hole so that the drawer pull screw would be long enough to reach. So I would use a screwdriver to tighten up your drawer pull screws so that you don't strip those out and then don't forget to clean up your mess. Now an even more accurate way of doing that is just take a measurement from the outside of this hole to the inside of this one or inside to outside. You're just getting center to center of the hole. And on these, I know that the center to center is three and three quarters of an inch. So then all you have to do is just measure over three and three quarters of an inch, make a mark. And you're gonna do that on all four corners. Then you'll connect those just like we did on the previous ones you'll get the exact same thing. It's just a little easier than trying to hold that drawer slide up there. So if we're doing multiple drawers and we want to make sure our drawer slides line up, it would be kind of silly to do every one just like we were doing. So all you gotta do is just find the center on the top and the bottom, and then we'll just take a straight edge and we'll make that mark. You make sure all of your drawer slides line up exactly. Now I made a bunch of drawers for this assembly bench build that will be out in a week or two. So be sure and check the channel if you're interested in that build. It is fantastic. This thing is beautiful. It's done already. I just haven't got the video done, so I can't wait for you to see it. It is sweet. Here's your sneak peek without the top, of course. Hey, thank you for watching. Click that box right there to take you to the next set of videos. Click on that box, get you that big old virtual fist bump. Also, you can click that box, another one of my favorite videos. Thank you for watching.